and welcome to the Law of Positivism podcast. I'm your host, Shireen, and I'm the creator of Law of Positivism. I'm here to help you on your spiritual and healing journey. I am a certified yoga and meditation teacher, a student of Chinese medicine, a doula, a Reiki practitioner, and a passionate, highly sensitive person. I want to use my knowledge to channel information and messages for you to grow on all levels. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode. I'm so grateful that you're here, and thank you to everyone who's been writing to me and giving me all these loving and positive feedbacks on the episodes. I'm so happy. And thank you to everyone who's been pre-ordering my book as well, The Law of Positivism, Live a Life of Higher Vibrations, Love and Gratitude. I've been uh, giving free oracle card readings for those that pre-order the book and it's going to be released in June right after the summer solstice so it's a beautiful and fruitful time and I'm excited to share this week's episode with you it's really an interesting topic and that is very connected to my studies in Chinese medicine as well it's about feng shui so I have Ariana Verhaus with me today. She's a certified Feng Shui practitioner in LA and she's a professional member of the International Feng Shui Guild and she has a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology and she's studied social psychology, child development, neuroscience and environmental psychology. And she draws from many other healing modalities in her practice, including crystal healing, meditation, space clearing, blessings, tarot, Chinese astrology, Vedic astrology. And in this week's episode, we talk about the basic of feng shui. We talk about the different directions and what they mean and the five elements how plants work in the home, colors, how you can arrange your bedroom for better sleep. It's such beautiful and inspirational topic. I'm so happy to share this with you. And also I want to thank Ace of Air this week again for being my show sponsors. And Ace of Air is the first and only fully circular beauty and wellness brand with a line of clean, vegan and cruelty-free skincare and supplements that have been synergistically formulated at the intersection of herbalist wisdom, modern science, focusing on rituals that work from the inside out. And you can learn more about Ace of Air at aceofair.com. They're inspired by Mother Nature's ability to create abundance without waste. Ace of Air is the first and only beauty and wellness brand designed to be entirely circular and fully zero waste. Such important work um, and I really love everything that they stand for and what they're doing in the world. So check them out, Ace of Air, and enjoy this week's podcast. Hi, Ariana. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Shireen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here with you. I'm so excited to talk to you today. And would you like to share any type of mindfulness practice that you have in your daily life? Sure, I would love to. Um, One practice that I've been doing actually now for over a year, maybe closer to a year and a half, is a series of exercises that I do first thing when I wake up in the morning and right before I go to bed at night. And it's called the solar body method. Um, It's basically a set of three exercises. And this method is meant to get you into what they call the solar body state. Uh, So that's like an energetic state where you have heat in the bottom of your body and uh, coolness up towards like where your head and your brain is. Um, And it also helps you open up your your meridians, it gets your blood flowing, uh, helps with your joints, all that kind of stuff. And I also like to incorporate some breathing exercises into it. So it really helps me 
do a mind body connection. So that's one thing that I do every day. And I feel so great when I do it. I feel more relaxed, more at peace. So that's one that I love to do. Um, I've shared that with my followers on my page, on my Instagram, and I have it linked in my link because I just love it so much. I recommend it to everyone. All my friends ask me about it if they see me doing it. It's a re really cool series of exercises. So that's one thing that I do every day that I love. Um, another thing that I love doing is just a regular meditation practice. And I'm actually very similar to Rachel, who you just spoke with um, on your podcast a few days ago. Um, she said that she likes to do mantra, Vedic mantra based meditations. And I also do the same. So I like to begin my meditation practice with some mantras and that just kind of gets me into a good zone. And then, um, I like to do journaling as part of my meditation. Uh, I have a couple other meditations that I like to do. One of them is called the great sunshine Buddha meditation. And that basically just brings in with intention, good energy into your body and helps you to release any stagnant energy from your body. So I think that meditation is a great practice and um, I think everybody should definitely, definitely do it. That's really lovely. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And it's sounds like uh, very good practices. Um, I have to try the first um, technique that you mentioned. Thank you for sharing. And I'm excited to talk to you today because what you and I are interested in are like going, flowing together very well because um, you practice and teach and, and work with Feng Shui, which a lot of people know slightly what it is, but it's also connected with the whole Chinese medicine system. So maybe you can start by uh, introducing yourself to the listener, uh, listeners, and just uh, yeah, just how you got into this. Sure. Um, so yeah, my name is Ariana. Uh, I'm a feng shui certified feng shui practitioner in Los Angeles, California. I've been practicing feng shui and learning about feng shui since 2017. Uh, I was introduced to it by a friend who who knew about it and just knew me very well and knew that I would love it. And that was very much the case. As soon as I was introduced to it, I very quickly became very obsessed and passionate about it and started learning more and more. Um, every time I go into a space, I'm, I'm analyzing, you know, I'm thinking about what, what the feng shui implications of the space are. And we all actually have this uh, power, if you, you want to call it that, this power to sense our environment. If you've ever gone to a place where you feel very comfortable or if you've gone to a place where you feel uncomfortable, you're using your feng shui muscles there. You're, you're sensing the environment and your subconscious body is reacting to that environment. Um, so yeah, it's, we, we all have the ability to sense these things. We we're all affected by it, even if we're not fully aware in our conscious brain. Um, but yeah, we're all, we're all engaging in feng shui daily because we're, we affect change in our environments and we are affected by our environments. Um, a great comparison actually is that feng shui is considered like the acupuncture of the environment. So similarly to where an acupuncturist wants to remove energy blockages and create balance in the body, uh, feng shui aims to do that with the environment. And just like acupuncture and a lot of the other Chinese metaphysical practices, it's very rooted in uh, the concepts of yin and yang and the five elements. That's beautifully put about how we can balance the body and balance the home and our environment. Thank you. It's, uh, I, th I've, I think, as you said, also, like we have this intu intuition and feeling when we go to certain places that um, uh, like a home can have really good flow and energy and then some places don't just feel good and and can be the energy the energetics in the room it can be yeah placements of of things so maybe we can start like with the basic feng shui like how is it how is the system structured 
So feng shui is a very, very vast field of information that has to do with a lot of different things. So like you said, it has to do with placement, furniture placement, room placement, um, symbolism through art, numbers, objects. Like I said, the balance of the yin and the yang in the environment, the balance of the five elements in the environment, uh, cycles of time based on planetary influences, that's all incorporated. Uh, something that uh, more modern or Western techniques of feng shui incorporates is toxicity in our environment. So what is toxic, what's healthy for us in our environments. That also includes uh, electromagnetic radiation. So that's kind of more of a new modern thing that we have to deal with today. Maybe they didn't really think about that kind of stuff back in ancient China, but that's more of a modern consideration that we have to take into account. Um, space clearing, space blessings, manifesting your dreams through your intentions, shifting your mindsets and restructuring your beliefs. That's all incorporated in feng shui and also to your, you know, your studies, the same with nutrition and Chinese medicine. Basically, one of the most important premises is that what's closest to us has a great deal of impact on us. So that includes your home. Uh, your environment, but that also extends even closer to you, uh, what you put on your skin, what you absorb through your lungs, what you put in your body when you're eating, it doesn't get much closer than that. So it incorporates a vast amount of information. We're definitely not going to be able to talk about all of it today, but anything that you're interested in learning more about, we can dive deeper into any of these topics on another day. Yeah. And so when it comes to, so I'm really interested now because I have uh, just like this has come to my awareness about the different uh, directions as well, because, you know, in Chinese medicine, also the, the organs and uh, the merid meridians are connected to the different directions, which is something that is also um really like in in a lot of old traditions like the north south east west um is is really important for specific uh, practices how how have you been working with the different directions like in a home like what is what is the basic uh, knowing of this um, so um the the basic premise is that each area of the home has a, a correlated direction, right? So you're, you're absolutely correct in that. Um, so there are nine areas of the home and each has its related direction. It has its related organs. It has its related um, elements. It has its related member of the family that it corresponds with. It has a period of time throughout the day. So it's very, very, very similar to Chinese medicine in that way. Uh, so the way that you would find each area of your home, I guess we'll just, we'll start in the north. Uh, so the north area of your home or apartment or your business, you can, or you can actually do this for any space. You can do it on the entire property, on a single room, on the entire home, on your place of business. Uh, so the north, the area that falls in the north is the career area. So that area has to do with your purpose in life, your life's purpose, your career, issues related to your career. Uh, so that area is dominated by the water element. So that's an area that you would want to include the water element. You can enhance that area with the water element. Um, that area is related to the kidneys, to the bladder, to the blood. Uh, so in, in Chinese medicine, that's how you would connect those two things. So if you were having some health issues related to that, that would be an area that a feng shui practitioner would look at. In the northeast, you have the skills and knowledge or wisdom area of your home or your space. And that's an earth element area. And that has to do with uh, the hands, the fingers, the spleen, stomach, pancreas, your sense of taste. Uh, so those are the, the kind of the body parts that you would look at if you were having issues in, in those areas. A feng shui practitioner might look in the skills and knowledge area in the Northeast. In the East area of your home 
is the family and foundation area. Um, so that element related to that area is the wood element. The body parts that are related to that area are the feet, the throat, the eyes, the liver, uh, the gallbladder, your muscles, tendons, ligaments, and your extremities. And that area has to do with your, fa your family relationships. And it also has to do with your ability to like pay your bills. So it has, it has to do with money related to the necessities. So your bills, food, things like that. In the Southeast area, you have your prosperity and abundance area. So this has to do with money related to uh, the extravagant things in life, right? Like gifts, vacations, extra money. So not related to like paying your bills and necessities and things like that. That area is also a wood element area. And it has to do with the body parts, uh, the hips, the thighs, the lower back, your butt area, um, also related to the liver and the gallbladder and uh, your sense of sight. So that's the prosperity area that falls in the Southeast. In the South area, you have your fame and reputation area. So this is the area that relates to your reputation out in the world, how people perceive you, the respect that you gain. Um, that area has to do with your eyes, your heart, the blood, the small intestine. Uh, in the southwest area of your home or your space, you have the love and relationships area, and that's an earth-dominated area. Sorry, I forgot to say that family and reputation is a fire element area, so you would want to have the fire element in that area. Love and relationships is an earth element area, and that area relates to basically all of your major organs, your stomach, your abdomen area, again, the spleen, pancreas, your sense of taste. In the west area of your home, you have the creativity and children area. Uh, that's a metal dominated area. And that area has to do with relationships with children, um, has to do with conception of children, fertility issues. Um, but it also has to do with creativity because anything that we give birth to, whether that be a project or art or an idea, that has to do with creation. So that's, you know, it's another uh, extension of having a child or birthing something into existence and that area has to do with the body parts of the mouth teeth tongue uh, the large intestines your chest your lungs and your skin in the northwest area of your space you have the helpful people and travel area or your mentor area so that has to do with receiving help when you need it and that can be help in the physical world like if you needed a teacher um, a doctor, a, a friend, anyone who could make your life easier or better. But that also has to do with helpful energies from the other side. So from the universe or your ancestors or whatever religion you follow, if you believe in saints or angels or whatever religion you follow, that's an area where you can work with those energies. So that's a metal dominated area. And that area relates to the body parts of the head, the lungs, the large intestines, the skin, and your sense of smell. Um, and then we're back to the north. Um, so those are the eight areas that are associated with the trigrams of the I Ching. So the expressions of yin, different expressions of yin and yang. And then the area that falls in the middle is the health area, and it basically covers all other body parts or all other situations that don't fall under the other eight areas. And it also has to do with just overall health and feelings of well-being in general. And that that's an earth-dominated area as well. Thank you for sharing that. That's so interesting. And when we're talking about the directions, I'm wondering... Uh, so if we just take south, north, east, and west as examples. So how, if, if we, everyone has a compass in their phone, so we know like where the directions are, how should it ideally, this knowledge about the, the four directions, how should we use that ideally in our home? Like for an area that is, for example, children, like how... Um, what what is good for that uh, direction? 
Um, sure. Yeah. So let's let's take ch the children and creativity area as an example. Um, so again, like I said, that, that's considered uh, the met a metal element area. So you would want to add the metal element there. The way you can add the metal element is um, by adding things that are actually made of metal. So iron, copper, gold, silver, any types of metal um, that would enhance that area. Also the shape of a circle represents the metal element. So anything in a circle shape also represents the metal element. The color white, gold, gray, silver, you can add the metal element by adding those colors there. And then I don't know how much you've gotten into the five elements with your listeners, but just to give a brief overview, the five elements really aren't elements in, the, in and of themselves. It's really a conversation about energy at its different stages. So just like water goes through its different stages, like it, when it's frozen, it's ice. When it's heated up, it becomes steam. So energy does the same thing. It has different qualities at different stages of being. So that's the conversation of the five elements. And the elements feed each other in a creative cycle where, they're, where they create one another. And they can also flow in the opposite direction where they're destructive or they're destroying the energy of one another. So in a metal dominated area, you would want to avoid elements that kind of destroy the metal element. So fire in the destructive cycle melts metal. So you wouldn't want to have too much fire element in that area. Okay, so uh, it's exactly like how we would think about, like what strengthens the element and then what um, is destructive for the element, right? Exactly, exactly. So um, the earth element strengthens the metal element, right? Because earth creates metal. Yeah. So you can also okay. add earth to that area to strengthen the metal element. So you do that with, with all the areas. All the areas have their, their element that strengthens and is the area that's governed by that element. So you would want to avoid the elements that bring down that you know, the, the governing element, and you would want to add other elements that kind of bolster the energy of that element. Mm. Yeah, that sounds interesting. So uh, do you have any examples for each area, things that are good? Like, um, it can be like, um, I, I, as I know, in Feng Shui, you can use different things in your home. As you said, for the metal element, it would be things in, in white and silver and round and then how is it with the uh, north direction yeah so the north direction that's your career area that's a, a water do dominated area so the element that governs that area is water so the way you can bring in water element to your space would be through the colors dark blue and black mm -hmm. um, you can add Glass, glass represents water. Uh, mirrors also represent water. Uh, what else? The, the water shape doesn't really have a shape. It's more of like a free form undulation shape. Um, so yeah, that's some ways that you can add water. You can add water literally with a fish tank, a vase full of water, anything like that, like literal actual water in that area or through symbolism, through your artwork. Like if you had um, a piece of art that had a lake in it or a waterfall or something like that, that would also add the water element to your space. And then say, you know, same thing. Um, metal is the element that creates water. So metal is also a great element to have in this, in the career area in the North because that metal feeds the energy of water. And you would want to avoid too much earth and too much wood in this area because earth dams water and wood drinks water, basically. So it, it uh, weakens that element. Yeah, that's interesting. And uh, thank you for sharing that. I'm also, I'm a big fan of having plants at home. And I'm wondering how that... Um, how that's incorporated when we're like um, 
thinking about the feng shui in, in the home? Yeah, so plants are considered one of the nine traditional cures. Uh, it falls under living things. So a cure is just another word for uh, a solution or a fix or something that you're putting in place to change the energy or to balance the energy in a more positive way. So uh, yeah, living things is a great way to change the energy up in your space. So that includes plants, that actually includes your pets as well. They're, you know, they're also living things. They bring a very live, fiery energy to your space. Um, but plants, uh, represent the wood element. So that would be great in the family area or the prosperity area, which are both wood dominated areas. Okay. And fam family falls in the east and prosperity falls in the southeast. But plants would actually also be great in the south because that's the fire element area and wood uh, feeds fire, right? You need wood to, to burn the fire. So wood would be great in that area as well. Okay, so it's not like each room uh, needs to have a plant. Um, not necessarily. A lot of feng shui practitioners actually don't recommend plants in the bedroom because at nighttime they actually switch into carbon dioxide producing mode. And they're also very much alive, right? So the energy of the bedroom should be more yin. It should be more restful. It should be a place where you're rejuvenating and it should be you know, quiet and more yin. And plants are more yang because they're alive. So it's, it, it's more recommended to not have your bedroom full of plants. Okay. That Although I do sense. still have a plant or two in my bedroom. So everyone has different tolerances for what they're able to handle in the environment. I, I kind of relate it to how, you know, we all have different tolerances for pain or different tolerances for what we can handle just in general. And it's the same with feng shui. Something that really bothers me might not bother you. Um, so there is a bit of difference just on personal differences. Yeah. Okay, so that's really interesting. And I'm also thinking about uh, like colors, since the elements have different colors um, and we spoke about it a little bit, like usually I'm really, I personally like bright and earthy colors at home um, and not so much, um, patterns and things like that because maybe I get too stimulated by <laughs> by <laughs> I'm sensitive but how, how how does one think about like colors in the different rooms do they, how do they uh, is it connected to the elements again or yeah you you can do it that way um I forgot to mention that this this map that I'm talking to you about right now where I'm telling you which area is in which uh direction it's called the bagua uh, it's basically a map that you can put over any space that helps you connect the physical environment with all of life situations. So that's why there's basically an area in your space that covers every area of life, relationships, family, money, career, all that kind of stuff. So you can choose your colors based on that, based on this map called the Bagua. Each area also has related colors and mo you know, a lot of them are based on the element that is governed and dominated in that area. So um, we can just go around again. The career area in the north, that area is a water element area. So um, blues in that area, blacks in that area, I guess it, it really depends on your sense of style, how much or how little you wanna bring into that area. Um, again, metal is also good in that area. So even what the colors white and gray in that area are great skills and knowledge in the Northeast. That's an earth element area. So the colors of that area could be like beiges, tans, yellow tones. That area is also associated with the, with the color blue. Um, so it doesn't necessarily follow the, the five elements for that aspect, but you can also add the color blue in that area. Um, I think that connection is maybe just skills and knowledge and wisdom in general, like connecting to your inner truth, connecting to your throat chakra, 
that kind of a thing. So um, it's a little more symbolic there. In the family area in the east, that's a wood element area. So green, shades of green would be great in that area. The prosperity area, same thing. That's also a wood do dominated area in the southeast. So shades of green would be great there. Uh, this area is actually also associated with the color purple because it's a very royal color and people kind of associate that with um, feelings of richness. And you, you do want to incorporate what each of these uh, areas mean to you. So whatever prosperity looks like to you, you can add things in that area that represents prosperity to you. It could be different for, for everyone. Uh, so you can even add like colors of gold in that area if that's what feels prosperous and abundant to you. Uh, the fame area in the south, that's a fire element area. So colors red, burnt orange, pinks would be great in that area. That's in the south. In the southwest, we have love and relationships. That's an earth dominated area. So again, you can use tones of like yellow, beiges, tan, uh, whites, whites and pinks are also good in that area just because it kind of feels lovey dovey. Uh, creativity in the West is metal element. So again, you can use white, gold, silver, grays, bronze colors in that area in the West. In the Northwest, that's helpful people. That's also a metal dominated area. So those would be colors of like gray, white, silver, gold, bronze again. Uh, and then in the middle, we have health, which is the earth element. So again, earthy tones, yellows, brown, beige, tan. Mm -hmm. And then I guess one other thing I'll say on, um, on colors, the bedroom again, the bedroom is a very important space. It's maybe one of the most important spaces in your, in your house, because that's where you need to rest and rejuvenate. And we actually spend quite a lot of time in our bedrooms. We spend about a third of our lives in the bedroom. So the colors for the bedroom should be a little more yin, uh, a little more pastel, lighter colors, lavenders, whites, pastel colors, um, just make for a more restful area for sleep. Yeah, you. thank you. You read my mind because I wanted to say that the sleep is so important and a lot of people are not sleeping well. And sometimes we don't understand that it can be how the room that we're in, the energy there, like how it's how it's arranged, it can really affect you. And I've been uh, thinking the past uh, months about this, like how uh, placement of the bed and the colors, like you said, I think I've intuitively done, done everything as w what you're saying, actually. I've, a lot of it is like that <laughs> here. But I'm wondering, like, one thing that I've been thinking about is the direction of the bed, like uh, where your head is directed, because I, I read something about that. How have how are you working with that to, to make sure like that uh, your clients get a good sleep besides the colors? Um, one of the most important things in feng shui about bed placement, and this actually applies to all of your major pieces of furniture or places that you're spending a lot of time in, but it really does, it's most important for the bedroom is called what's, what's called putting yourself in the command position. Um, and that is the place in the room where you have a good view of the door, but you're not directly in line with the door. And this is one of the most important things to put yourself in for ease peace of mind, uh, well-being, feelings of calm, feelings of like being able to get work done as far as putting yourself in this position when you're working. Uh, basically anywhere in line with the door is, is a stream for some harsh energy or just a lot of energy. So you don't want to place your bed directly in line with the door. And also just think, thinking about it from more of like an ev evolutionary perspective, our brains are wired to kind of be on edge or be in self-preservation mode. So when you don't have a view of the door, your subconscious mind is kind of wondering what's going on behind my back. Or if in, you're in direct line with the door, your subconscious mind is kind of wondering, okay, what if a threat comes through? I'm going to be in direct line with it, right? 
So you want to put yourself in the position in the room where you can see the door, you have a view of the door, but you're not directly in line with it. And ideally, you would want to have um, no windows behind your bed and no windows cutting through your bed either. You want a solid wall behind you. And ideally, you wouldn't want any windows coming through as well. If and this is kind of hard to have every single thing perfect in every single place. So there are ways that you can mitigate issues if you find that you have to be in, in line with the window and things like that. Having thick curtains that make you feel a little more safe and protected is one thing you can do to kind of mitigate that issue. But yeah, it's definitely recommended to put yourself in the command position for your bed, for your desk when you're working. This will just put you in a, a place where your mind is more at ease. Yeah, that's what I also heard. And I think um, a lot of bedrooms are intuitively built like that. <laughs> I, if, I, if I think back of, of how it's been arranged. So that's really good. And do you think that there's a direction that the, the head, uh, your head should be in while sleeping? Or does that depend on your own constitution? It, uh, that depends on your birth chart, actually. So that's calculated from your birth date. And yes, um, there's basically two groups. There's the East group and the West group. So there's uh, a good amount of people that belong to the East group and they have favorable and unfavorable directions based on their birth date. And then in the West group, they have their favorable and unfavorable directions based on their birth date. So yes, that can you can you can also incorporate that. You can incorporate your own favorable or unfavorable direction. You would want to avoid your unfavorable directions. Okay, that's really interesting. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. It's there's so much to learn. I think a lot of us can really dive into this if we want to create a, a nice and flowing home with a lot of good energy and working with the elements and understanding that what, the elements are not just outside of our home, it's inside of our home and in our body as well. So I'm really grateful that you uh, had time today to share all your wisdom and how can people connect with you if they want to learn more? Well, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. And I'm so happy that we've connected and become friends, even though we're on the other side of the world from each other. It's so wonderful to connect with you and have a friend who's interested in all the same stuff. Um, I'm thrilled to have been on here. We barely, barely scratched the surface of all the things that we could potentially talk about. Um, if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on my website, fengshuimystic.com or you can connect with me on Instagram at Feng Shui Mystic or on Facebook at the Feng Shui Mystic. Those are probably the best ways to contact me. Uh, you can also send me an email, ariana at Feng Shui Mystic.com. Thank you so, so much. I'm really happy that we connected. Yeah. And that we're uh, in different parts of the world, but that we, are connected through this and I'm sure that we're going to talk more so I'm I'm going to put all of your links in the show notes so everyone can connect with you and thank you so much again thank you Shireen I can't wait to talk to you again soon thank you so much for listening this week I'm so grateful that you are here with me and with my guests sharing these beautiful topics and if you do want to check out any of my meditations or um, yoga videos, you can also follow me on um, YouTube for these videos. And I would like to close this episode with a deep inhalation in through the nose. And exhaling out, releasing, feeling grounded. Grounded.